Craft. All right. So we got this crazy chip over right. again. <laughs> top top three percent. Nice. Top <laughs> This morning, I am at the Stevenson Harbor, getting ready to go on a full day fishing trip with my wife and her family. This is my first time fishing, so I'm pretty excited for this experience, even though it's super early right now and I'm still half asleep. This is the boat we will be on, and this is our group. This is Frank, the captain and owner of the boat. He's going around helping everyone out one by one because almost everyone here is an amateur. He takes private bookings as well as mixed groups like this one here. I ended up catching three fish myself and the whole crew did super well for being amateurs as you can see. Speaking of fishing, let's see how I did on my poker session from two nights before. I am back at Gran Vila to play some 2-5 cash. For my first interesting hand, I pick up Ace-3 of Diamonds on the button. Middle position limps and low jack raises to $20. High jack calls and I call. The blinds fold and the limper also calls. The flop comes, deuce 6 8 rainbow. Everyone checks. The turn card is a 3, giving me a low pair. The middle position leads out for $25 and it folds to me. Right now, I read the villain as weak, because I don't think he should have anything too strong on this board for lib calling, unless it's a set. But I just don't think a set would be betting so small here. So something about his demeanor screams one pair, with top pair weak kicker at most. So I decide to go for a pretty risky bluff here. Risky in the sense that I don't have good blockers, like 4 or 5 for blocking the straight. I do have a 3 that blocks a set of 3s, but that's about it. I raise it to $75. I obviously hope to take it down now, but my plan is to also see if he re-raises. If he had one of the really strong hands like a set or the straight, I feel like there's no way he doesn't do that in this spot. If he just calls, I plan to bomb the river with any scare card that's not an 8. He calls and the river is a 6. He checks to me. I feel like that's a pretty good scare card, so I follow through with my plan. I bet $250. The villain tanks for a while and then calls. I say good call and he shows 7-8 of hearts to catch my bluff. The next interesting hand I have pocket aces under the gun. I open to $20. Under the gun plus one calls, the cutoff calls, and the big blind calls. It's four way to a flop of deuce 9-8 with two diamonds. Big blind checks and I lead out for $50. Under the gun plus one raises to $175. Then the cutoff jams all in for $480. The big blind folds and it's back to me. There are a lot of situations that I would fold in this spot, facing a 3-bet jam on the flop multiway. But my bluff from before is still pretty fresh, so I know my image is loose and players may call or raise me light. There's still one player behind me to act, so I briefly take a look at him and he gives off the most obvious tell that he wants to fold his hand. So now I'm just thinking what hands the cutoff can jam with that I can beat. And it's quite a lot. My hand unblocks top pair, unblocks all diamonds, unblocks 10 jack and all the other over pairs. I call and under the gun plus one folds. The board runs out a 10 and a 5. The villain yells out he has a 10 and I table my hand. He mucks and I take the pot. This hand I have 10 7 off suit at the cutoff. It starts with a button straddle of $10. The big blind calls, there are 3 more limpers and I limp as well. The button checks. The flop comes, ace 10 7 with 2 hearts. The middle position leads out for $40. My bottom 2 pair is likely the best hand right now, but 
I don't think I need to raise for protection because I have one heart blocker and the ace of hearts is out there, so the villain is most likely betting with an ace. I call and everyone else folds. The turn card is a 9. The villain leads out again, this time for $95. This player is really tight and I've seen him limp with queens, so I actually think ace and high kicker is the bottom of his range for leading out. I decide to be cautious and just call. The river is a complete brick. He bets $100, and this bet screams blocker bet with a showdown hand. I contemplate whether to raise or not, but in the end I decide that if he has what I think he has, which is just an ace, he's not going to call any raise, and I don't want to value on myself just in case he has ace 7 or ace 9 or even ace 2 suited. I call, and he turns over ace queen. This hand, I have ace 10 of hearts in the middle position. It starts with a button straddle of $10. Both of the blinds call, and I open to $50. The hijack re raises to $150. The blinds fold, and I call. The flop comes ace 10 6 rainbow, and I hit top 2 pair. I check. The villain bets $100. This player is very solid, but he had just lost a pretty big pot, I think literally the previous hand. So, his stack is dented and he might be on tilt. So I decide to go for a check raise. I make it $300. I'm just hoping he will tilt off his remaining stack with any ace. But he knows better and lets it go. This hand I have pocket threes at the cutoff. The low jack opens to $25 and I call. The button and small blind folds. The big blind 3 bets to $125. The low jack calls, which gives me more odds to set mine, so I call. The flop comes, deuce 4 queen, all clubs. Everyone checks. The turn is another queen. The big blind and low jack both check again. Now I'm thinking, I might have the best hand here. I don't think the low jack connected at all, cold calling preflop and then checking twice. I take a peek at him and he looks like he has given up on this hand already. The big blind, who is the preflop 3 better, is likely holding ace king or pocket pair. I thought about it and decided that a bet here can get some value if he happens to have the ace or king of clubs. And if he has none of those suits, then my bet will serve as a protection bet now, as well as a blocker for the river. If I bet and get called, he will likely check the river, and depending on what the river card is, I'll have the option of either checking since I have showdown value, or evaluating if I need to turn this hand into a bluff. I bet $150. The big blind calls and the low jack folds, which is what I expected. The river is a 4. The big blind checks. This is a horrible river because my 2 pair just got counterfeited and my hand downgraded from having decent showdown value to none at all. So I decided to turn my hand into a bluff and I'm mainly targeting ace king high that missed. I go with a bet of $250. The villain actually tanks for a little while and then calls. I say good call and he shows ace king of clubs for the flop nut flush. This hand, I have 6-7 of diamonds in the small blind. There is a button straddle of $10. I call, the big blind calls, there are two more limpers, and the button checks. The flop comes, 8-9 ace rainbow, and I have the bottom open under straight draw. Everyone checks. The turn card is the miracle card as I drill an offsuit 5 for the nut straight. I lead out for $40. The big blind folds, and then under the gun plus 1 raises to $110. Everyone folds and it's back to me. This session I've been pretty balanced, meaning I've pretty much shown just as many strong hands as I have bluffs. It's one of those times that I can potentially get max value from nutted hands just by leading strong. Even though the board is dry, it's just way better to put the villain to the test playing a guessing game rather than slow playing or value betting. I'm just going to re-race to set up river jam on basically any card. I peeked at a stack and decided on a sizing of $350. The villain thinks for a little while and then announces all in. I of course snap call and show my hand. The river is a 7 and the villain mucks. For the last interesting hand of the night, I pick up pocket kings on the button. Middle position opens for $15. Everyone folds and I make it $60. 
The blinds fold and middle position calls. The flop is Queen Jack 8 Rainbow. The villain checks to me. This is a board that could potentially hit his range harder than mine, so I decide to go for a more cautious and trickier route. I check back for pot control. The turn is a king, which gives me top set. He checks again, and now there are way more draws out there, including a flush draw and any ace 9 or 10 holding. I decide to bet $75, targeting his weaker pairs or weaker draws, or maybe any combination of both, to stay in. He folds, and that wraps up my session. I see that at another table, a regular named Garrett is building a pretty cool chip structure. So I ask for his permission to film it and share it with all of you. This session I bought in for $1,460 and cashed out for $3,137. That is a profit of $1,677. Yeah.